Thank you, Peter. Well, good morning. I think my talk is down here someplace. Religious science in many ways is about energy, and boy, do we have some wonderful energy to hear this morning. This is a, truly an honor with um, new members, new practitioners, and a lot of new people here. It's a really a, a, it's an honor to, to be speaking this morning. As both um, Bonnie and Cheryl pointed out, it's tradition in centers of um, spiritual living to review the first, first four chapters of Science of Mind in January. I am delighted that you know, so many people are, are reading with us as we go through this, because I think um, that, that'll make a wonderful step in their, in their growth. Bonnie reviewed chapter one, what it is. Tina covered, I mean, uh, Tina covered uh, chapter two, the way it works. And it is my job to look at chapter three, what it does. And as, as Bonnie pointed out, um, my talk will be pretty much about how it's unfolded in my life. And next, work, uh, next week we have Larry that'll be wrapping up with how, how, how to use it. Tina, Geneva Collins and I were fortunate to go through our classwork in the first year of practitioner studies with uh, Reverend Donald Graves, whose focus was heavily on law and the mental. Next, we completed our pra uh, studies and served for many years as uh, practitioners for Reverend Candy Smith Frank, whose uh, focus was love, the heart, and oneness with all. Another way to see the difference between the two was uh, Reverend Donald was committed to personal growth, personal goal setting, cleaning up old beliefs that no longer serve us, owning the effects that we create in our experience of life, acknowledging the ones we like, and cleaning up the beliefs which no longer support, uh, support us and we wish to release. There was a wonderful saying that, uh, that we had while we were going through classwork with Reverend Donald. It was called, treat and move your feet, which means you, you treat for what it is you want and then you, t you take action on that. Holmes tells us, a passive treatment will never produce an active demonstration. In other words, effective treatments are not passive. Candy was passionate about life and exuded love with a commitment to building community. You can look around the center and see the images of uh, Candy's ministry reflected in this facility and the personal growth reflected in the works of the creative members, the um, work, the glass work in the, in the, um, the back, or the, the entrance that we have, the, the Zia, the sound booth, the quiet room, the stage, are all reflections of the, of the, the work that, that um, went into the personal growth of the members at that time. The prayer ministry was also formed uh, under uh, Reverend Candy as well to better serve and support and build our community. What they both taught and demonstrated is summarized by Holmes's word, love points the way and law makes the way possible. So what does this have to do with what it does? Our experiences are driven by cause and effect. We take action based upon conscious and unconscious beliefs, which is the cause of the results we experience, which are their effect. Holmes, uh, Ernest Holmes says his philosophy is the essence of simplicity. He also says that in, giving, in a given situation, one state of consciousness will result in one kind of uh, effect, in another mental state, a different outcome. As a businessman, I recognize a business's result are a reflection of a group consciousness. The same is true with a spiritual community. What it does is create an outpicturing of consciousness. 
So how are we doing at uh, CSL? Well, look around. Our a physical facility is a testament to members growing through the service to our community. Its physical transformation over the last year is a vision of inspired consciousness in action. The community is uh, blossoming through workshops, classwork, and many activities. And especially by uplifting Sunday services followed by fellowship and a wonderful meal. All a reflection of the consciousness of Reverend Bonnie and our, our wonderful boards, and we have to give them many kudos. Dear to my heart is the prayer ministry um, here at uh, where, where CSL, Unity, and Wellsprings ministers and practitioners come together to serve the greater community. This too is a, as a testament to Reverend Bonnie's commitment to inclusiveness. It is hard to imagine a more powerful group working for you in our greater community. Plotinus, a third century Greek uh, philosophers said that there is within each of us a higher man and woman, of course, waiting our recognition. That recognition comes when we sometimes, or uh, that recognition often comes sometimes when someone comes into our life and sees that greater person reflected and reflects it back to us. I love to swim. Growing up in Southern California with its beaches and pools, that's what we did. I moved to Mission Viejo in 1969 and watched as it became a swimming mecca. I was fortunate, uh, I was fortunate to be able to swim and work out with um, Flip, Dar, uh, Flip Dar and his college uh, team. Flip was a master at recognizing that greater person within and lighting a fire within them. Flip developed um, new, uh, numerous uh, Olympic swimmers and actually had them participating in every Olympics that, we, that, that the U.S. swam between 68 and uh, 84. And he also trained many national uh, champion swimmers. He often said the difference between a good swimmer and a world-class swimmer is more mental than physical. When you worked out with Flip, he had you swimming with swimmers who would help each other develop and would push each other. So workouts were often more, not only physically challenging, but mentally, and helped develop the greater swimmer within. I had, I have integrated many lessons from this period into my life. Two I would like to share with you. Uh, the group I worked out with included many unforgettable characters and situations. One was a young woman who was one of the uh, finest uh, female butterflyers in Southern California and was the dominant swimmer in our group. At a swim meet in Mission Viejo, she was, she, uh, she was um, seated in the center lane as, by, as having by far the fastest time in that heat. Next to our five foot three heroine was six foot four surfer dude who resembled um, Michelangelo's David. As we watched our heroine climb up on the starting block, she looked up at Mr. Buff Soso Swimmer and he looked down at our petite damsel and you could see on her face that the race was over before the gun announced the start. She turned in her slowest time since age group swimming at an early, as, a, as an early teenager, and the dude swam his fastest time ever. I'm sure the Flip orchestrated this, and I'm sure at some time she thanked Flip for what he called his malpractice lesson, or mental malpractice lesson, teaching us never to let the emotions of the moment overwhelm what we knew to be true. Flip's advice was to step back, take a deep breath, and get a grip. The mind has 
the power to both sabotage you and to support you, and you will always know uh, which in time to take appropriate action. If you do create a mental malpractice, Reverend Be uh, Peggy Bass's suggestion was never make your past bad. It is part of who you are, in fact, a building block of your present and future, therefore part of your strength. A sentiment I know uh, Flip thought as, uh, saw as true and a, a great lesson I've embraced over the years. A second unforgettable character was a swimmer in our group who was 65. Now, in retrospect, I know his times would have been in the top 10 in the world at the time. That said, in my early 30s, I thought a guy that old had no right making me work so hard <laughs> to uh, stay ahead of him. After a while, I thought, wouldn't it be great to be that age and have 30-year-olds uh, and, and be able to push 30-year-olds? In 1972, uh, Flip talked me into swimming in a regional uh, master swim meet. Uh, to my great delight, I swam my 100 fly like Flip, like the swimmer that Flip had seen in me. For the next 25 years, I swam my 10 or 12 miles a week because I loved to swim. And then I was talked into getting into Senior Olympics. Once committed, I worked hard, went to another regional's uh, master swim meet, and swam a time slightly faster than I had 28 years before. So what does this have to do with what it does? You're wondering. Each of us have wonderful people who come into our lives and help us reveal that greater person within. Flip, the young girl, and the 65-year-old help unknowingly to find the swimmer I am today. Through our lives, there are people who serve as mirrors for us to, in the process of our growth. Conversely, we are mirrors for others in their lives. While Flip, the girl, and the 65-year-old had no idea the difference they made in my life, we will probably never know the impact we have on the lives of those around us. Life is reciprocal, supporting us as we support those around us. I took a workshop from Tony Robbins, an impressive neuro-linguistic programmer, NLP trainer. If you're interested in that, talk to Larry. Not me. What fascinated me about the workshop was his, commit, uh, was his comment that if you can understand the state of mind and the beliefs of any person who is able to do something, you can do it too, as long as there's no physical reason that, that, that limits you. He went on to say that this is how he learned to fire walk. Now, we all have a special relationship with fire. I can still hear the concern in my mother's uh, voice when I got too close to a hot stove or a lit barbecue. Or the concern in Tina's voice today is I load wood into our hot stove without gloves. And I have objective evidence on my hands to show why. I want to do a little exercise, so indulge me, and I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. And I want you to visualize yourself standing on a patch of cool, wet grass. Feel it on your bare feet. Feel that coolness. Now visualize, stretch before you an eight-foot field of 1,000 degree hot coals. Feel that heat flowing over your feet and drifting up towards your face. In your mind's eye, see the glowing coals. Now think about taking a step into that bed of coals. What do you feel? 
Now imagine you are standing on the cool grass on the far side of that bed of coals. Feel that exhilaration knowing you took that first step and completed the walk. Be with that for a moment. And you can open your eyes. With this as a frame of reference, would you allow yourself self-imposed limiting beliefs to go unchallenged? Can you ever imagine accepting unchallenged perceived limitations of what the greater you can accomplish? Holmes reminds us man is unfolding from a limitless potential but can bring into his experience only that which he can conceive. Think about that. I applaud that letter that Reverend Bonnie um, read from Reverend Claudia Whitaker. The idea of supporting people in terms of their helplessness was repugnant to her. The job, or the, that our job as religious scientists was to spark that light of divinity in them. This reminds me of the old English proverb, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day, teach him to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. We are not helpless in creating change in our life. I know the divine presence resides within every man and woman, which means within each person resides the ability to recognize the greater person within, to walk across, across the hot coals of life, and to step into the magnificent experiences that are there, th there for each of us, to be channels for the abundance that surrounds us. It is often easier to see the strengths and potential of those around us and not to be able to see past the mistakes and the perceived failures in our own life. Which brings us to classwork. Classwork provides the tools to transform consciousness, to introduce us to that greater person within each of us. Tina and I, um, some of us want to lose a few pounds. Tina and I signed up for Nutrisystems and the Aggie Fit Challenge, which gives us an opportunity to weigh in every week and have it published. <laughs> <laughs> Tina and I are motivated very much by competition. <laughs> Both programs have worked for us in the past, and setting a goal and, and treating and then taking action really does uh, yield results. If, however, you want more effective experiences in life, try signing up for classwork. It has worked for us in all areas of our life, and if you are serious about change and willing to apply yourself, it will work for you as it has for millions of people over the years. So in conclusion, talking about tools available to you to facilitate change, who here this morning can think of one thing that they would like to change in their life? Come on. Okay, good. Are, if you are serious about, uh, are you serious enough about this to take action today? If so, fill out a prayer request. Then commit to, to doing two things to prove to yourself that you are serious about that change. The prayer, the prayer ministry will treat for you, and you taking action will help create wonderful results. Remember, when you are ready, this tool is always available for you each Sunday. Namaste.